to go in and find back in a corner. On the next quilt show, we couldn't take you to the beach, so we brought the beach here. That is Mill Beach. So where we're at now is the room of Rick Mahal, who is our editor and has been with us since 2007. That's correct, John. 2007, that puts us at what? Uh, I'm not going to do the math. <laughs> <laughs> 14 years. 14 years with the cold show. Yes. Uh, I think what people really would like to know is how all this comes together, because this isn't just one person in their basement trying to do a YouTube. This has all kinds of aspects coming together. And, and what we have, how many cameras do we have going to? John, we're working with five cameras this week. We've got three on the floor on those big pedestal looking type of uh, newsroom type of cameras. We've got one on a big arm that's called a jib that gets all the detail of the quilts coming down on the uh, work table. And then we also have one that roams around. So we have to come around the work table to get in tight on some uh, applique or some technique or some thread work then that guy can zoom in directly right over the shoulder of Alex or Ricky or the guests and get that detail too. So there's five cameras we work with to create right. a show. And is there more than one sound track or is it just one soundtrack? You know, uh, there are uh, lots of pieces of audio that puts the show together. So we have Alex mic'd up, we have Ricky mic'd up, we have the guests mic'd up. Uh, in the beginning, when Justin does his cold opens, he has a microphone. So I have to pick and select which mics are open and closed when we're putting the show together. And then not only that, but when I do finalize the show and master the show, um, when we bump in and out of segments and stuff, there's a little bit of music. So I got to mix the music along with the voiceover of when they begin the segments. So. Well, for my techie people out there, what software do you use when you're doing your... Uh putting all the stuff together? So I'm using uh, Adobe's uh, software, which is uh, Premiere Pro. Uh, originally, when we started the show 14 years ago, we were using Final Cut Pro, Apple's program, but we moved on to uh, Adobe Premiere. And this is a great piece of software that allows me, and I can even show you, this show, this promo that I'm putting together that people have not even seen yet, that'll probably go out later this afternoon, it was shot in Northern California on location, and you can see that there are multiple cameras when I work with the show. So, hang on a second, so when I, here's multiple views, so you can see two different views. This show was only done with two cameras, right, so we can see who's um, the guest along with Alex, and then we can see what they're talking about. But for what we're doing this week, it'll be the same technique, but there will be five cameras that we select as they're talking that we use. That's one thing we always had to tell the audience is that what they were seeing on the monitor isn't necessarily what's going to end up in the final show because you then get a chance to choose. That is and true. you said it, it was kind of new to you is because it's education? You it is, say? yeah. So what I was uh, saying to you earlier was that, um, you know, I'm not a quilter, right? But I've been doing this show for 14 years and it is highly educational. People need to understand what's being taught um, when we're doing the show and I feel that when I'm editing the show if I understand it the viewers gonna understand it and the way I make that work is when I cut between the cameras so if they're talking about a piece of detail or they're talking about a knot or bearing your thread we need to see that so I gotta make sure that is seen when they're talking about it. You know one of the things I've always told any new group of people I always do a test I always say Who's the stars of the show? And they always say, you, Alex and Ricky. You <laughs> told me that test yeah. within the first year. We were on the telephone. John, I remember that. We were on the telephone, and you gave me that test. You said to me, go, Rick, who's the star of the quote show? Well, you know, <laughs> I thought it was Alex and Ricky, and you said, no, it's not. It's the quotes. And that's why it's called The Quilt Show. And the quilts are the star of the show. And we need to see the quilts, and we need to understand how they're put together. So tell us some of the things that, uh, what happens when things go wrong? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there are times where, uh, as part, part of my job as an editor is troubleshooting and uh, getting over some of those technical hurdles, okay? So, for instance, uh, we've been, I've, ha I've had situations where the color is real 
you know, it's not right, right? So then I have to do what's called color correction. Inside the program, there's another program that allows me to adjust the color. Um, there could be problems with the audio. It could be too loud or too soft, so I have to make those adjustments. Or, And we've also, which is very interesting, um, I always tell people if they can't hear or see the edit, then I've done my job correctly. It should look, if the edit pops out where if you've watched a movie or a TV show and you're like, whoa, that was just, where did that come from? The editor didn't do his job. If you can watch this from the start to the beginning and it just it's just entertaining, it's educational and you get something out of it and don't get interrupted with the editing, I've done my job right. There have been instances where someone said the wrong word and so instead of stopping and, 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 and stopping the momentum of what's being taught, they just keep going through it and then the producer at the end when we stop the cameras will say, you know, this word was not correct we need to do what's called a pickup so then they'll they'll stand right there they'll turn the cameras back on and whether it's alex or the guest they'll re-say the word over you know so you have to take that word put it all then, the way back yeah, to when they should have said it and then insert that word you know and make it sound natural that's the trick is to yeah. make it sound like you know i'm not saying today we're going to talk about binding and then we're going to talk you know the word binding popped out it needs to sound like it was always there so you know that's part of the, the well i do know that uh throughout the years our biggest problems have been usually with sound yeah. but yeah. you do have the problem like you said with lighting because very often, whether you're at a quilt show or here doing taping, they like to use yellow lights, right. which kills the white right. of a quilt. Right. That's exactly right. You know, they call that, uh, in the beginning, they'll set up the cameras and it's called white balance, right? Uh, this is a prime example right here. I mean, they're in this, this room uh, and the walls, uh, and I believe I color corrected this, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if you're going to be able to tell or not on the camera, but this actually was color corrected. Well... It may be too much to call up the material here, but anyways, these walls were very yellow, and I made them more white with a color corrector. You know, I and what I do there is I add more blue to it, to the yellow, which makes it more white, ultimately. Oh. So, and you got to, you know, and it's all subjective. As an editor, um, it's it's your choice. You know, uh, color correction, it, it's kind of like putting a quilt together. You know, you, you make the decision. It is your decision, and you know it's nobody else's, and someone else is going to have a different opinion. So you kind of have to, you know, uh, ride that middle of the road kind of uh, thought when you're making these decisions on how much blue do I add to that scene to make it look more white. Because sometimes if you add too much, if it's heavy hand, if you're like, ooh, that looks a little on the blue side to me, you know, as an ed another editor yeah. may see that. So again, I'm doing stuff behind the scenes that. People should never talk about, you know, yeah. and if they do, I didn't do my job correctly. Well, one of the things we've all learned about now is that on Zoom, they have some kind of a filter uh, yeah. that, that helps at least a little. I know yeah. Alex, Alex hates high def. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, is yeah. there anything like that that happens? Uh, you know, it is. Yeah. There, there have been some times where I have done that where uh, I soften, you know, and I can tell when I'm looking at certain TV commercials and movies, I can tell when an editor has added this filter. And basically what it does, it makes it less harsh, you know. So when people are in high definition, there's a lot of light, and you can see every little hair and stuff, you know, uh, and a lot of people don't like that, you know. So what an editor will do is they will add a little bit of filter, just... When I say soften it up, it doesn't make it real blurry, but it softens it. You know, it just adds a little bit more organic where it doesn't look so harsh. And, and that's generally what we're talking about. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for what you've done all My these pleasure, years. John. In fact, let me show them. You yeah. brought some of the past tapes here. We're at a new studio here in Dallas, outside Dallas, and uh, we used to be in Denver. And these were the all the uh, tapings that uh, occurred over the last... Goodness, I can't even imagine how many years this has been. But each one of these is a hard drive, three terabyte of material on a hard drive that holds about 10 shows. So you can see how many shows there are here, you know. So I'm going to take this back to Chicago, kind of reorganize it, add more assets to the drives. And this is part of uh, a, a larger part of the uh, TQS library where we pull stuff off. Or we will be pulling stuff off of this in the future, perhaps, to do more masterclass shows.
Yes, because that's what you had to do. Is you had to go yeah. back to all these old tapes to get the master Mass, classes yeah, right. back together. Yeah, yeah, find a needle in haystack, John. And so trying to make some of the older ones look a little bit newer. Correct. Yeah, and yeah. new graphics and new sound, new color, and, and, and bring back to life. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rick Mahal, our editor. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you.